Socrates famously said, the unexamined life is not worth living. But what did he mean by that? Most people think what, what he was getting at is that unless you're willing to wrestle with, contemplate the great philosophical questions like, why are we here? What happens when we die? Is there a God? That you're not really living up to your full human potential. You're not living life fully. And for Socrates, living the examined life wasn't just life's greatest pursuit. It was also life's greatest reward. In a previous blog, I talked about how God remains hard to get, that he remains hidden so that only people who, who really want him, who really desire a relationship with him, will he reveal himself to. But that means that seeking God, Christian faith, requires a lot of time and effort. It requires an examined life. I talk to so many people who say that they believe there's got to be something out there, but there's no way to know who or what that is. So why should they waste their time wrestling with these questions? Why can't they just live their life and enjoy it? As long as they're good people, if there turns out to be a God in the end, they're going to be okay anyway. It's a great point. Why bother? Why wrestle with these questions? Why live an examined life? Before I tackle these questions in future blogs, I need to tell you why, why you should bother. Actually, I'll tell you three really good reasons why you should bother. The first is that Socrates had it exactly right. Even if you don't find answers to, to your questions, the, the very act of pondering them is reward in itself. When I was in college and, and, and went on my religious quest, I, I agonized for several years over these questions. Easily, those years of my life were some of the, the most fulfilling and exciting years I've ever had. And for that reason, I continue to contemplate these questions, even though I found solid answers, answers that have stood the test of time. I continue to, to ponder and wrestle with these questions, being open to, to new insights or, or new challenges, because the very act of doing that makes me feel more fully alive. Socrates is totally onto something. If you want to know the fullness of life. There is no parallel to living and examine life. Second, however, I do think you can find good answers to these questions. In fact, I've staked my life on it. If you wrestle with the truth, wrestle deeply with it, you will find the truth. And the truth turns out to be a person, Jesus Christ. There is nothing in life more, more transforming, more life transforming, than, than knowing him, knowing his perfect, unconditional love. The age of social media has created a, a whole new um, anxiety disorder. It's called FOMO, fear of missing out. When people don't have access to their devices, when, when they can't go on Facebook or, or Instagram, they feel heightened anxiety that, that they're missing some kind of key social interaction. And when they do have their device and can go on Facebook and Instagram and things like that, they still feel anxiety because they're looking at all the, the fun and exciting things other people are doing that they're not. They feel like they're missing out on all these amazing lives other people are living. Of course, all that's an illusion. Those people really aren't living lives that are that fun and exciting. We tend to put up our ideal selves on, on those social media sites. But if Jesus is real, you may be missing out on the most exhilarating thing in life. You might be experiencing the ultimate FOMO, come true. So if there's the slightest chance that he's real, it is more than worth the effort to find out. And third, living an examined life, contemplating these questions may have everything to do with your eternal destiny. A number of years ago, um, I went out for a long run. And when I came back, I, I sat down on the front porch of our apartment complex and I was trying to recover from the run. I was completely out of breath. A newer neighbor happened to be walking around the corner and he started a conversation with me. Previously, we had just kind of waved to each other from the anonymity of our car. So this is the first real conversation we ever had. As he began the conversation, I couldn't talk. I was just totally out of breath. He asked me this question. He said, if you were to die tonight, do you know where you would go? I knew exactly where he was going with this, this line of uh, 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 questioning. But I didn't have the ability to speak at that point, so I couldn't tell him, no, 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 I'm, I'm a believer. You don't have to go through this whole, whole spiel. So he did anyway. He gave me the whole why I need Jesus kind of a thing. 
it was so uncomfortable listening to that little speech he gave to, to, to why I needed to, to accept Jesus as my savior. And I'm a believer, I was a believer at the time. I can't imagine how uncomfortable and awkward it is for people who don't believe. For many decades, Christians used to ask that question. If you were to die today, do you know where you're going? As a way of initiating a discussion about salvation. Fewer and fewer Christians do that now because instead of starting a discussion, inviting a discussion, it tends to shut it down right away. But no matter how ill-advised that tactic was asking that question, the question itself is perfectly valid. It's critical. It's vital. Where is your eternal destiny. If Christianity is true, then your eternal destiny depends completely on having a real, all-consuming relationship with Christ. I don't mean to be wagging my finger in judgment. Um, I, and way more importantly, God desires nothing more than, than that people be saved. He desires that all people be saved. But, but if the essence of salvation is a relationship with Christ, if that's what it consists in, a freely chosen relationship with Christ, then everything is on the line. That's why it's so urgent to think about these things, that, that there is no more ultimate risk and there is potentially no more ultimate reward. And so ultimately, that's why it's worth the time and effort to think about these things, to live the examined life. I'd love to hear what you think about this blog or, or any other. You can go to the Contact EJ page of this website or the Raising Jesus Facebook page and, and leave your comments or questions there. Thank you.